because I just feel like something good is going to happen to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you feeling it? Hallelujah. God will always speak to you to a level of expectation. But not only that, He will exceed that. And I just got a feeling this morning. When I woke up this morning while I was praying, I wrote this down. Something good is going to happen to you today. And you need to believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something good is going to happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, for a wonderful privilege this morning to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, I'm so excited this morning. It's the 1st of September. It is a new season. It is spring. And I want to declare this morning, not only the natural, it is a new season, but spiritually, it's a new season. I thank you, Lord, that we will just experience, we will see the power of God. We will see the anointing of God. We are going to move into a new season where God is going to display himself to his children. And I'm so excited this morning because something good is about to happen to me. Something good is about to happen to each and every person in this place. I want to declare it this morning. It is a new day. 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 Hallelujah. And may God bless us. Bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. You may be seated. How wonderful to have you here this morning. I've got a little bit of feedback here. Um, we had a full house this morning, then our first service, and I know that God is going to do something special for you. Who's excited this morning? Who's excited this morning? You don't sound like excited people. Come on. You answer that. Because the God of the mountain is still God of the valley. Do you know that? Hallelujah. If you've got your, I just want to start before I read out of the word of God. I just want to give you some background in terms of what happened in this passage. I'm going to read out of 1 Kings 20 verse 23. But it's very quite interesting when you read through the Bible and you read the story that you would see that the Bible talks about the king Ahab, and he was the king of Israel. And the Bible said that there was another king that came against him, and he got another 32 other kingdoms, countries, to come against the kingdom of Israel, which meaning there were about 30, 33 other countries coming against this one country. And this king sent the message. To Ahab, and he said to Ahab, listen here, hand me over all your silver and all your gold and all your best women and all your best children. I'm coming to collect them. There don't need to be any war, just hand it over. And the king said to himself, and he sent the message back, and he said, listen here, I'll hand myself my silver and my gold. And my best woman and my best children, we will hand over to you. But then the king, the oldest heard about that, the elders, and they said to the king Ahab, and said, King Ahab, we are not going to give anything to the enemy. What God has given us belongs to us. And I want to ask you, children of God, this morning, you need to make up your mind. We are not giving anything to the enemy. He's not going to steal. He's not going to come and destroy. We are standing on the word of God. And these elders here, you listen here, sent a message back to this king that we will not hand over our gold, our silver, nor our women, nor our children. Hallelujah. We will. We will keep what God has given us. And the Bible said this. You can just imagine what happened to this king with these other 32 countries. They said we will pull up against them and he sent the message back and say, you did not want to hand it over. We will come and we will come and destroy and we will steal it from you and we will take it from you with force. But the Bible said, and then they prayed, uh, Ahab prayed and the Lord said to you, you don't worry, you will have the victory. And they fought on the mountain and he had the victory. 
the Bible says that at 33 kings in their country state ran away. And then the scheme. And he stood and he stood up. The other 32 came and said to them, Why is God always with Israel? Yes. And they made this conclusion. They made the wrong conclusion. They said that God is only the God of the mountains, He's not God of the valleys. You see, they were, they had all these gods and they got a God for the rain and they got a God for winter, they got a God for summer, and they got all these different thousands of gods. Their gods could only be a God of one thing. So with the mistake they made, you say, well, we know now. You know the God that Israel serves can only be the God of one thing. He's the God of the mountain. He's not the God of the valley. What a mistake. Amen. What a mistake. Amen. And they said, they said, listen here, we're going to come back. And we're going to get the king in the valley. Israel, we're going to meet in the valley. And if you read the word of God, 1 Kings 20 verse 23 declares this. Their gods are the gods of the mules. That is why they were too strong for us. But if we can fight them on the plains, surely we will be stronger than they. Turn to your neighbor and say, what a mistake. What a mistake. Oh, you don't know what's waiting for you. And then they got them and said to the Ayyad and his kings, listen here, we're coming back. Actually, the prophet of God said to him, you need to be ready, they're coming back, they're going to attack again. I want to declare it this morning, it doesn't matter if the enemy attacked you and he failed, he will come back again. So he came back and again, God gave Ahab and his kingdom the victory. They were about 7,000 um, soldiers, the Bible said they killed on one day more than 132,000 people. So you can imagine why I have the, there's no way at the beginning I'm just going to hand over. There's no way that I can win this. You see, if God is on your side, it doesn't matter how big the army is. It doesn't matter how big the force is. It doesn't matter what comes to you. Because God is with you. And now this verse, 1 Kings 20 verse 28. The man of God came to the king and the king of Israel to Ahab and he told him this. This is what the God says. Because the Arameans think the Lord is a God of the hills and not of the valleys, I will deliver the vast army into your hands and you will know that I am the Lord. Not only Lord of the valleys, not only Lord of the mountains, I am Lord of the mountains, I am Lord of the valleys. I am Lord all over. Hallelujah. I don't care this morning what your valley would might look like. Maybe, maybe you have a valley of sickness this morning. Maybe you have a valley of depression or oppression. Maybe you have a valley of financial difficulty this morning. It doesn't matter how your valley looks like this morning. But what I know this morning, I serve a God that's God not only on the mountain, but up the valley. There's no situation, there's no problem, there's nothing that can stop God this morning to perform a miracle. Hallelujah. I serve a God of the mountain and a God of the valley. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get all excited this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you name and say he's God of the mountains. How does the God of the mountains look like? Isaiah 52 verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring the good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim the salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. I want to declare it this morning. Your God reigns. Your God reigns. When times are good, be happy. When you're on the mountain, be happy. Hallelujah. But when times are bad, to consider this. When you're not on the mountain and you're deep down in the valley and it's all dark around you and you don't know how you're going to get out of this, hear what the Bible says. Consider this. 
God has made the one time as well as the other. So what does it say? God is in control of the good times. He's in control of the bad times. So when it's going back with you, consider this. You are not alone. Consider this. He is still with you. Consider this. Although he was on the mountain, he's still with you in the valley. Hallelujah. Consider it. God is everywhere. Hallelujah. He's in the mountain. He's in the valley. He's all over. You are never alone. Don't you know that so you need to understand? God is everywhere. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 139 verse 7 declares, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up in the mountains, you are there. If I make my bed in the nets, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light and the light become night around me. So what he said, what is the song saying here? He says, it doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter where I go. God is there. I want to declare it this morning. God is in your difficulty. God is in your sickness this morning. God is in your problem this morning. God is in your goodness this morning. It doesn't matter where you find yourself this morning. Hear the word of God this morning. God is with you. Hallelujah. He is with you. You are not alone. When you're in the light, stay. He is there. When you're in the fire furnace, He is there. Hallelujah. God is everywhere. Get all excited this morning. You are never, never, never alone. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surely darkness will hide me and light will become a night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. Oh, I love this. Darkness is not darkness to God. We hear what the Word of God says. It says this. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light yes, to you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I hear it be all that are for you may be comfortable that I'm for Hallelujah. It is the one first of September. It is the new day. It is the new season. God promised this morning something good is going to happen to you this morning. God is going to change your circumstances. He's the God of the, the mountain. He's the God of the valley. So you need to get all excited this morning. You need to jump and you need to praise God this morning and say, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. This is my day. This is my season. This is my moment. This is my breakthrough. This is my revival. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Do you think I'm a little bit crazy? I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I said it in love. I said it in love. It's not been impossible for my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever is darkness for him, or whatever is dark is light for him. Amen. There's no difference between a mountain and a valley for my God. Amen. All the same. Because when there's darkness, it just says, let there be light. And there's light. Oh, hallelujah. I just feel, I just feel, I just feel this morning yes, that something good. We need something good this morning. Just pray for me. We need to pray for me this morning. We need to, I just feel it this morning. It's your moment. It's your day. Hallelujah. God is going to do it for you this morning. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 6 verse 3. And they were calling to the, another. Holy, holy, holy is Lord Almighty, who, who, who the whole earth is full of His glory. Amen. Amen. I want to declare it this morning. If you are in the valley this morning, just start, start, start crying out, Holy, holy, holy is God Almighty. If you're in a financial crisis this morning, 
just cry out this morning, Holy, Holy, Holy is God Almighty. If you're this morning in a situation where you say, Lord, I don't know, and it's just dry bones that are around you in the valley, maybe you're in the valley of dry bones this morning, or that you need to sound up this morning, Holy, Holy, Holy is God Almighty. Why do we cry out He's holy? Because first of all, He is holy. Holy means that He's separated. Hallelujah. It means there's no other God like our God. It means that He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Holy means this morning, our God is a God. The whole God is no other one like Him. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is God. Almighty. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amazing. When you read through Genesis, you will find a man by the name of Abraham. God told Abraham, take your son, your only son. Hallelujah. You need to go and offer him. What a sacrifice. You need to go and offer that son. You need to take that son and you need to sacrifice him. And you all know the story, the Bible said that morning early, he raised up early, took his son and his servant and they went up to the mountain. And while they were walking down, or walking up to the mountain, the son asked him and said, Father, everything is here, but what are we going to offer? What are we going to do? What are we going to give? And Abraham said this, he said, God will provide. God will provide. And what was quite interesting this morning, while I was reading through this passage and thinking again, I wrote this down. His mountain became his valley. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Abram's mountain became his valley. He had to take his best, his only beloved son, and he had to offer him. So his mountain suddenly became his valley. But in his valley, he met the king of the mountain. Yes. Yes. Amen. Abram's mountain became his valley. But in Abram's valley, he met the king of the mountain. Yes. Amen. Amen. Genesis 22 verse 14 says, So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. And to this day he said, On the mountain of the Lord he will provide. Isn't it wonderful to know that in your mountain, the God of the mountain, in your valley, the God of the mountain will provide. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amazing. Yes. In your valley, your God of the mountain will provide. One of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord our provider. The Lord will provide. Abraham calls this place God will provide. Remember this. In your valley, God will provide. Amen. In your valley, God will Amen. provide. The Hebrew word is much richer than our English word. It says that God see, the God who see, or to see it. So what it means is that while you're in the valley, God sees you. Amen. He exactly knows what you need. Bible says, before you have asked, I already know what you need. Before you ask, I already know what you need. But what you need to proclaim this morning in your valley, you can't just sit there passive and do nothing. You need to shout out this morning, Holy, Holy, Holy is God our provider. And the moment you do that, there's an activation in heaven that releases and God says, I see it all. I exactly know what you need. 
The God who sees, the Hebrew also means to perceive or to experience. It means when Abraham call God, calls God Jehovah Jireh, he is saying, God gives the goods. Yes. It also means that God is experiencing exactly what you are going through. Wow. Yes. Now you prove that through the New Testament because the Bible says there's no sin, there's no sickness, there's no trouble that Jesus hasn't gone through on the cross for you. So he has experienced it all. So the Bible says when you're in the valley, God sees and he experiences. And he knows what you need. What you need. Philippians 4 verse 19. And my God, say my God, my God, my God, my God, my God will supply God. some of my needs. <laughs> it says my God will supply every need of yours according to to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He will supply Amen. All. Amen. all. Say all. 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 all of my needs. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. Matthew 6 verse, 20, 6, 6 verse 26 declares, Look at the birds, they don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns, for our heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable than them? Aren't you more? Paul Patterson said the following. If you have a special need today, focus your full attention on the goodness and greatness of your Father rather than on the size of your needs. Your need is tiny compared to His ability to meet it. You see, the problem is a lot of us want to, wants to that, that downgrade God to the size of our problem. Dis af goede diens in die waarheid. Wie, want jy maak jou God groter as wie God werkelijk. Jou ja, probeer jou God. Ja, in die waarheid. Wat is afgod in Engels? Heidemann. 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 That's it. You are making your problem your idol. Yes. Wow. So when you make your problem bigger than God, your problem becomes your idol instead of God. So never downsize your problem to a level of where God is not. At the end of the year, I don't know if God's going to do it for me. I don't know if God is sick. I don't know why everything just falls on me. God is not on my side. God has got something against me. Turn your name and say, Amen. Amen. That's not true. Do not make your problem. I want to conclude when you go through a valley you are not alone yes. you know what I'm saying when you go through a valley you are not alone John 8 verse 12 says I am the light for the world follow me and you won't be walking in the dark you will have the light that gives light. Well, come here. So what does the Bible say? No, no, no. I read the book. Just read it. <laughs> so what does the Bible God, God, do you know God is light? Yeah, yeah. So wherever God is, there's light. So it says, when you're in darkness, just follow me. So I'm following God. Yeah, so what's happening now? He becomes my torch. Okay. He becomes my light. He becomes my light. So you just follow God. And if you keep on following God, you will never be in darkness because God is light. And that's why He says, the darkness for me is as light because the moment I walk in, 
the switch goes on and the light enters and wherever I walk and wherever I go, there is the light. So when you go through a valley, you are not a light, though, just follow the light. Just follow the light. Point number two, draw close to God. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not burn up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Hallelujah. When you alone draw close to God. Call out to God. Psalm 50 verse 15. 50 verse 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and maybe I will deliver you. That's what my Bible says. Maybe your Bible says, maybe. What it says is, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will. Say, I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Deliver you. Deliver you. And you shall glorify. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you great and hidden things. You see, it's in a valley that you will learn hidden things. Things that you never knew before. It's in that valley that God will display His power and His will. If, remember what Paul said last week when he teach on that. In your weakness, God will display His power. And it's in that valley that you will really understand who God is. Point number four, trust the word of God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the raw places a, a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. Mm. Next week, we've got a conference to show you the glory. And I was preparing the sermon for Sunday morning, showing me the glory. And it's amazing. Glory means to be in the presence of God. God's presence is always being displayed where there's glory. It means that God's power is being displayed. It means that God's provision, goodness is being displayed, and His protection. So the moment you say, show me your glory, you're asking for God's presence, you're asking for His protection, you're asking for His provision, and you are asking God to show you His power. Is it amazing? Lord, show me your glory. Every time that you are in a valley, it's an opportunity for God to show you His glory. Amen. His glory. Turn to your neighbor and say his, at his last point, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Your belly is only temporary. Yeah. To Corinthians 4 verse 17, for our present troubles are small. Yes. I like this. Our present troubles are small in the presence of God. Our present troubles are small compared to who God is. Hallelujah. Our troubles are small. If you think of the power of God, our troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet. He says, so by the way, you are rejoicing about your troubles that are small and that are only there for a small while. Yet, there's some qualification there. They produce for us glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Hallelujah. You see, in your belly, God's power, God's glory has been displayed. Come and sing that song again. He's still God of the mountains and He's still God of the valleys. Hallelujah. Remember what I said at the beginning. Something good is going to happen to you today. So you need to grab hold of it. It's yours. So wherever you are this morning, know that God is taking care of you. Amen. Amen.